Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Folkestone. We're about to head over to Europe to start filming for some of the pretty cool videos coming up, actually. Uh, I'm doing videos that you lot have requested, and a lot of them mean I have to go over to Europe. So I'm actually heading over for three days, and I thought I'd film the road trip as kind of an extra special video. You can see, actually, I've got the bed all set up. I've just stopped uh, before this at the supercharger, before whichever the one at Folkestone is. I'm not actually sure which one it's called. There is a charger here, which is what I'm at at the moment. You can see that I'm currently charging up. Uh, but yeah, I put the bed in the back at the last charger and then the time that I was actually took me to put the bed in I charged enough then to get here so it worked out really well. The whole reason for this trip really is just to go over and see what the Tesla will do in the European roads. Obviously this is a right hand drive car how's it gonna fare with all the other cars how's uh, navigate on autopilot gonna work also when I came out of the car this morning there was an update which was pretty cool 2019.16.3.2 I've never known it to have so many dots before. We're starting off now though we're gonna go over to France drive through Belgium and then go over to Amsterdam. I'm gonna be staying in Amsterdam for a couple of days. Then we're gonna pop over to Germany so that I can film some Autobahn videos and also videos just in Germany in general as well. And then we're gonna be heading home in two, two and a half days. So it's quite a quick trip. I wanna get about eight videos done. I've got three business meetings and one uh, medical appointment to get to in Amsterdam. This morning I've already driven from here, which is Swindon, which is roughly where I live. I've driven all the way down to Folkestone down here wasn't too bad, took about three hours, so that's pretty good. We're gonna cross over now, and then we're gonna drive all the way up through Ghent, through Antwerp, up into Amsterdam, which is all the way up here. And I've got 109 miles, we're charging at 200 miles an hour, so we might be able to get further, actually, and we might, hopefully, be able to get all the way up here. It depends if I stop and film on the way. Yeah, well, let's get going. We're on the train now and you can see behind they're actually closing the doors so you kind of get like segmented into each one. It's mad to think that Jeremy Clarkson floored it down one of these in an episode of Top Gear ages ago or maybe it was Grand Tour, I'm not sure. Because this is so tight and this is even the wider, bigger zone. So we have like this massive trailer, for example, in front of us. So it's pretty crazy. I think what we'll do now is it's going to take 35 minutes, it says, but we don't leave for another 20. So I've got probably an hour on here, I'd say. I'm going to jump in the back, have a sleep, watch a film, relax and then we're gonna get up. I couldn't quite get enough charge to get over to past Ghent, so instead we're gonna be going to this one here, uh, which is at Bruges. We're making good time. The train is officially moving, we are underneath the water, and we are on our way to France, and I'm lying in the back on my bed, on my dream case. Actually, more to come, obviously, on this and dream case, uh, but it's weird because this soon, is gonna be what we're doing in our cars while it's driving down the road. Everyone's gonna have a dream case and a bed in their car, and we're all gonna be sleeping while the cars drive themselves. It's such a weird concept, but just lying here, I'm watching Family Guy while I'm watching lights go by the window, because obviously I'm underwater. My ears are popping too, actually. Um, but yeah, it's nice. Like, I could get used to this, and if my car would happily drive me on autopilot so I could lie in the back and watch Family Guy will maybe be a bit more productive, but for now, watch Family Guy. I'm totally down for that. And if you're wondering, I'm six foot four, and if I actually lie flat in this car, yes, my feet touch the end, but I can actually lie completely flat in this car on my bed. It's so sweet. It's seriously, like, so, so cool. in the battery and we've got 124 kilometers to go so it should be all right to get us there uh, I'm not sure about the speeds here I can't really convert kilometers to miles an hour because obviously we use miles an hour back in England whereas here it's all kilometers so I've set the car to kilometers an hour so at least I can I know if I'm speeding or not through that but to be honest I'm just letting navigate on autopilot do it all out here and it's really really good I'm getting a warning saying I've got to stay below 115 
to get to my destination though. So I'm gonna have to slow back down and go under that speed limit. But yeah, autopilot so far on these roads has actually worked better than at home. It's really strange. I also now totally understand why people from Europe and America and stuff say that our roads are complex and crazy in Britain because yeah, it's completely flat here. And this is the first bend in like an hour or two and there is not a hill in sight. Like, it is crazy. I mean, it's pretty boring if I'm being honest because it's just so easy. We've just arrived at our first stop on our trip and our first stop actually in Europe. You can see actually we've got 50 odd kilometers left. So we actually got here with quite a lot of kilometers left compared to what it said. It said we were only gonna get here with about 4% battery remaining and I had to stay below 120. I ended up going 120 the whole way and it still said like 12% left in the battery at the end. So I'm not sure where it got that out. I think it was being like a little bit careful just in case because normally I drive Oh yeah, this morning I drove pretty fast, I guess, down through England, so it probably thought I was going to carry on doing that speed, but I didn't. So uh, yeah, I mean, this place looks nice. It's like a hotel kind of thing, and it's got a bouncy castle. The funny thing was, sat at this supercharger station here, I saw a load of other cars. They've, they've all gone now, actually. And I thought to myself, why is everyone sat in their passenger seat? But obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm sat in the passenger seat now, and everybody else is sat on the correct side of the road. But yeah, I'm not, not going to lie, the roads have been pretty boring to get here, but I mean, boring is good when you just want to get somewhere, you know, fast and a long distance. I don't know if you can tell, my eyes are just heavy and horrible. So yeah, I'm gonna have a little sleep and actually I really need the loo. So I'm gonna go see if they have a toilet. We're going to Brekul, Brekulen, Brek, Brekulen, Brek, Brekulen, I don't know, in Netherlands. But look at how many stalls this thing has. There's one person there and there's like 20 odd stalls, 28 stalls there is. That's got to be a record for Netherlands or Europe or something. Scratch that, it's got nothing on what Bad Ho Ved Op has. I'm pretty sure it's not Bad Ho, but you know, Bad Ho Eavesdrop is what I'm going to call it. Bad Ho Eavesdrop is uh, not only half full, but look at this, 32 stores. Thankfully it did have a toilet in there, but the thing is, I've gone in and I've come out and the car is almost ready to go on its next trip. Like, I'm not sure if it's because of this new um, heating up the battery before you get to a supercharger, but it seems to charge so much faster now than it ever did, because I, I can hardly go and do anything. I was gonna get out, cause down there, I've actually got my electric scooter, and I was gonna bring get my electric scooter out and go up or down the road here, but I don't have the time. I literally don't have the time, it's too quick. Here we are, we're in the underground car park of the hotel here. It was so tight to get down. It's like this spirally staircase that's not stairs, uh, but it was so, so tight to get down. But luckily we got here and it actually looks as if each of these on the wall here, you see that? And then there's another one like further across or somewhere like there, maybe, yeah, there. They are all electric car charging ports. It seems. I'm not sure what type they are, but uh, well, let's, let's go have a quick look. It looks like they're actually, oh my God, they are, look, they're the standard uh, cable Yes, all right, so we've got two of those. So we can plug in here and charge overnight as well. So we're never gonna lose juice here, that is brilliant. I wonder what power they are. Probably just seven kilowatt. Ignore the fact that this is for a BMW, but boom, there we go. We actually have power. Let's see what this is actually charging at. Yeah, it's definitely not the quickest. We're only getting 12 kilometers an hour, but that's fine. I mean, we're pretty much full anyway, but that means when uh, we come out tomorrow to come and film with the car, this will be fully charged and it will be fully charged as well when I'm ready to go home. So yes, yeah, seven hours to get this last bit. Yeah, quite a long time. It's the morning, the car has been fully charged and we've actually got 300 kilometers in the car. I'm not sure how much this car should have, but 300 kilometers sounds pretty good. So what we're gonna be doing now is getting in and heading down to Dusseldorf in Germany. I wanna film some stuff on like the autobahns and whatnot, but it's like 4 a.m. and I'm so tired, but it was, uh, it was worth it. My electric scooter has been the absolute dream of Amsterdam. Riding this thing around has been so much fun. Like, it's been absolutely crazy. But uh, and yeah, and we've got another Tesla over there, uh, which is Frost, and he's charging up as well, which is really cool. And we're gonna see him down in Germany a little bit later. So I was able to do all my business here in Amsterdam, uh, go to my hospital appointments here in Amsterdam, uh, yesterday and now we're off to go start filming again, but I'm actually going back to the UK today So we're gonna complete the lap right. Let's get going oh, 
right, let's go. There's always one, isn't there, in a car park that has to park so close when there's so many spaces. And the stupid thing is, this is an electric space and he's not even plugged in. So, yeah, thanks, buddy. Just got to kind of squeeze through here. Oh, also, I was going to do a story on this dent in my door. If you want to see how that all happened and why this potentially saved my life, let me know. Hit the like button down below. We've got some dancing cars on the screen. And this, I mean, this car is just going for it. Look at this little SUV. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to get out for this one. Oh. You gotta make sure now you get it in in time. Don't hit me barrier, don't hit me barrier, don't hit me barrier, don't hit me barrier. Thank you. I didn't even have to pay for parking in the end. It wasn't on my bill and I've just got out, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you can see that like all these bikes here have flown over. There was a storm last night when me and Frost were getting dinner and it was insane. Just check this out real quick. And then all of a sudden, we've just been hit by the like biggest storm in the world. This is absolutely insane. What the f is going on? Hey man. And we were just outside, like we'd, we'd gone down the pier to have a smoke and then we started walking back and it just started pelting it down, which was crazy. And bikes started flying. Honestly, I've never seen it before. And I had a, a little warning come up on my phone from the government saying that there was gonna be a storm. Like, this place is just insane. Some of the stuff they do is crazy. Okay, let's pop on the sat nav uh, our next destination. We're gonna be heading down to Germany and we're gonna be coming down this road here. So we wanna get to this supercharger station in Zevenar, Zevenar or something like that. 92 kilometers away. That's not actually too bad at all. And then that'll bring us right here on the border of Germany. Let's see. I guess we're gonna be coming down the A1 down the A30 uh, and then across the A12. Yeah, exactly that. So not too bad, one hour, eight minutes and it's 110 kilometers. So we should end up with pretty much 200 kilometers on the dot. Let's see if it can do this. We've arrived at the supercharger actually in really good time. It's only seven o'clock and as you can see, it used a little bit more battery than we were expecting. 182 kilometers left. I think I said we should have about 200 left. Basically we're gonna go down the three uh, in probably go around Duisburg or however you get around it and then hit that supercharger and then we're going to be going left down this road and this is going to cross us over into Belgium I guess it's time to charge up get some food there's a Starbucks apparently over there the fastest that I've seen is 400 kilometers an hour let's see what we get this one like there's nobody else here so, I don't know, uh, focus, focus. There's no one else here, so it's like completely clear. And uh, I'm hoping to get over 400. I don't know if it goes over. No, it's getting to 380. We're back on the road. We've got 290 kilometers in the tank. I just met this guy at the uh, supercharge station. I forgot to film actually, and he pulled up in a Model 3 and he was telling me all about his Model 3 and some of the issues he's had with it, what he loves about it, what he doesn't. Uh, and then we we spoke about going to Germany and, and the Autobahn and stuff. And he said that you'll know when you're on the Autobahn because the the car will not have a speed limit on it and it would just like, you can just go for it. So. We're heading up now. We're literally just about to cross the border. Um, I think we're going onto the three, the A3, the Autobahn 3, uh, coming off of the A12. So this is gonna be my first time. And I'm a little bit nervous because I don't know the road. I don't know the rules, really. Like, I've read them, but they kind of say different things depending on where you read them. Um, and I don't know what this car can actually do speed-wise. So I'm just gonna floor it when we get onto the Autobahn and just keep going until the car won't let me go any further and hopefully I'll survive and I think um, I think it's I think it's gonna be fine I think it's gonna be uh, pretty cool actually all right so I've just done the Autobahn at maximum speed I got the Tesla to the maximum speed I'm not gonna tell you what it is but just watch this little clip of it you know accelerating and stuff let's put our foot down and see so I'm gonna start off doing it on miles an hour because obviously that's what I know best And we're gonna try and get ourselves up to 150. Yeah, it's pretty damn cool. It got to a top speed. I kind of expected it to get to a higher top speed, but like I said in the video, I'm gonna come back and basically do this trip again and some when I get my Performance Model 3. And obviously when that comes, it's gonna be faster. It's gonna be more powerful. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be the dog's bollocks. It's gonna be absolutely insane. So yeah, I'm really excited to come back and actually do all of that. I started off with 300 kilometers, right? Um, and all I've done 
is, I don't know, 60 kilometers. And I've used 150 kilometers worth of battery. We're at the next supercharger station. Again, there's, there's, there's nobody here. Uh, it does say here that you're only allowed to charge for 40 minutes, but I'm gonna completely ignore that rule because there's no one else here. What I wanted to show you though was that I've been actually leaving these around at uh, each supercharger location that I'm using on my trip. So if you know where this location is in Germany, and obviously you're local, you can come and collect this. I'm going to be leaving it 3A, and I'm just gonna tuck it just there. So yeah, if you want one of these, make sure you go check uh, each supercharger I go to because I leave them around. This is uh, my goodie bag. So I literally have this goodie bag full of these charges so that when I go around, I can just kind of drop them off. Uh, I think it's good fun. I think people like it, you know, and yeah, so that one's there, so that's gonna stay down there. And uh, yeah, that's my goodie, goodie bag, and I just uh, can keep it under there, which is super handy, because obviously I can have the bed still lying down, and I can just kind of pop this under floor, and then it goes flat again. Look at that. It's so insane. This charging station also has one of the nicest interiors I've ever been to. I just went in to use the bathroom, and uh, yeah, look, 40 minutes, maximum charging. I'm not sure what that's about. Yeah, it has like this insane area inside that has pool tables, foosball, um, a cigarette machine, which I haven't seen in years, absolutely years, but then Europe, I guess they still have that here. Uh, it had TVs, it had Playstations, you could just go in and play and do whatever you want, uh, but I'm doing this trip solo, so I can't really play pool with myself. Pretty much charged now. We were able to get 305 kilometers out of it, which is actually pretty damn good. I've just had this pull up beside me and the guy's just gone away, so I'm just gonna really quickly check out his car. So this is the uh, Model 3, and this is, he's from the Netherlands, so this is in German, this is from the Netherlands. It looks so good in white, I kind of wish I'd bought mine in white. So I've gone for a black one, but the performance version, and look, at the, I don't want to get too close because I don't want to set off his uh, sentry mode, but look at that. They look beautiful, they look beautiful, and they don't look too small at, at all. I was really thinking that, like, in real life, they would look really small, but they actually don't, they actually look... Uh, pretty big. I quite like those alloys. Oh, I don't know. No, I know that when mine comes, I'll be happy with it, whatever it is. Uh, so let's have a look, shall we? So yeah, we've got 100, 100, 305 kilometers. I'm going to try and use all of the 305 kilometers to get us to the next destination. So we've got to find something that's like either just above 300 kilometers away or just below 300 kilometers away. 240 kilometers away. We should get there with plenty of charge left, and I'm gonna try and do it within the speed limits and everything. My goal with this is to find out if the Tesla is really accurate with its readings. So we've got 305, it says the total trip is gonna be 265 kilometers, so we should arrive with exactly 40 kilometers to spare. It is, however, saying that I should charge in Eindhoven for 20 minutes. So it's actually suggesting that I charge, but I'm not obviously gonna do that because we should have enough uh, in the battery to get us the whole way without charging. So, let's get going. This is gonna be quite a long video for me to film, but it's gonna be good fun. little update for you. We're nearly about 70 kilometers uh, in and we've gone down 60 kilometers in distance. Yeah, it's looking pretty good onwards and upwards. We've just passed the border now into Belgium and you can tell when you're in Belgium because the road has gone from completely amazing and you know lit everywhere, so smooth, no noise, to a horrible road. Like this is a hideous road. Like. I mean, it's noisy, it's bouncy, it's like loads of different colors. It's really kind of confusing. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's pretty pretty loud. It's getting quieter now, actually. Oh, Christ, okay. This, this is generally just like bouncing up and down on bridges. I don't know if the camera actually is getting it, but I hope it is. Nine kilometers left and 70 kilometers to go so it is starting to catch up a little bit or oh, 88 so we're only 18 kilometers now away and you can see we're actually going past now the closest supercharger so if things don't go to plan after this supercharger we might be in a little bit of trouble so there's no going back after it but I think with 88 kilometers left we should be able to do this like pretty happily and pretty easily uh, I've gone 110 now so I'm slowing down a bit but 
Yeah, it's going all right. We are now not far off at all, okay? We've got 37 kilometers left in the battery and we are 17 kilometers away. Excuse this cable, I'm doing a time lapse that you probably saw me put the camera in. Um, yeah, so we've pretty much kept at a 20 kilometers um, like give way or leeway for the last, I don't know, 200 kilometers or so. And I'm going 120 still, I've not slowed down. It's told me at some stages to go under 100 and I've, I haven't, I've just stayed over 120. And to be fair, actually on the Autobahn at the beginning, I kind of forgot I was going 150 for on autopilot for, you know, probably 20, 30, 40 kilometers maybe. And I think that's where, you know, when we started off, uh, I had 40 kilometers. I think I ate those 20 kilometers up on the autobahn. So it's actually been really, really good. And it, it's followed exactly what it should be. I don't know why it keeps on asking me to slow down though, because like it doesn't need to. I think it's just being safe. It doesn't want you. So it says we're gonna arrive with 6% uh, battery remaining. I think it wants you to arrive with 10% battery. Um, but you know, I, I, I don't think 6% is an issue. That's still quite a lot. Like, you know, there's a lot of leeway between here and there. Um, and yeah, so it's worked out pretty well. So as, as far as a range test has gone, I'm really happy with it. It's exactly kind of what it said, minus a little bit, because I drove a little bit faster. Uh, shit, we're in a little bit of trouble here. So the one bloody road that I had to go down to get to my supercharger is completely blocked off on the motorway, as you saw from the uh, from the time lapse. The junction that I had to come off is actually completely shut from, uh, you nearly fell. I got you, I got you, because of road works. So it's told me to turn around, go back on the motorway for how long? It's gonna be, it's another six, eight, eight kilometers. Uh, I've got 17 kilometers in the tank. Okay, few. So I do have enough to get there, but that was weird. Like the car tried to go down it as well because it was on Navigate on Autopilot. It was like, yo, I can't go down here. What's going on? Yeah, it was blocked off. We made it, but oh my God, 12 kilometers left. That was way too close. So let's go and charge this up for the last time before we actually head back over to England. Look at that. It is, it's so bloody empty. It's unreal. There's that familiar sound. The charging sound. So uh, yeah, we've got here now to France and I've just got back into the bed. Like as soon as I get somewhere now, uh, I don't know where to put you guys, I'll put you down here somewhere. Yeah, I do like the same routine now. Whenever I get somewhere new, I just jump in the back, start charging and just relax for a bit. So now I've actually recorded, um, if I look onto my notes, for this trip I filmed six videos and yeah, it's actually been pretty, yeah, it's been pretty good. We've got most of the videos done. So now all I've got to do here is charge here and then I can continue driving down more uh, and I can go see more uh, of the north of France bit and then obviously the D-Day, um, uh, what do they call it, D-Day, what's the word? When you remember something, remembrance, I guess. I guess it's a remembrance. Uh, I'm not sure what they call it, but it'd be quite cool to go out there and show respects and uh, see what's happening. So I might go do that. It depends really if I fall asleep now. If I fall asleep now, I might sleep for like five hours and then I'll just be ready to go back to, shush, I'll be ready to go back to England. So I'll just go jump on the train uh, and you know, just, just go on back home. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. It's currently one o'clock. I'm absolutely knackered because I've been up since like four-ish. So yeah, I'm gonna have a little shut eye. I'll see you guys in a bit. We're back up to charge. I actually only charged it to 80% uh, this time just because I don't have to go too far now uh, and I didn't want to like overcharge it loads and whatnot. I had a little kip in the car, but to be honest, I, I couldn't really sleep and settle just because I know that this isn't the end of my trip. Like if I went to Calais and slept there, I think I could sleep for a bit. But when I'm here, I'm like, I need to get to my destination. I can't like wait somewhere. I have to just get to my destination. So with that in mind, we're going to hit the road again right now and we're going to go along to Calais. Let me show you the plan. There's this supercharger or then there's this supercharger, which is the one that we want, which is the UK bound. So it's a hundred kilometers away. Let's navigate to it and see how long. So we've got 260 kilometers in the battery and how long is it going to take only an hour so it's only going to take an hour um so yeah well we might as well just get going to be fair there's no point just hanging around we've made it okay we're here at cali now uh, it only took like 40 minutes that was such a quick drive i had a race with i think there's an r8 behind me here that um, i basically 
didn't race actually, that's not the right word. We drove fast together, but not over the speed limit, which is why I didn't record any of this bit. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we made really good timing. And I just, I followed the sat nav and I was having so much fun, I forgot what I was gonna do. And now I'm in the, the tunnel, um, like passport bit. The problem is this, we're currently stuck in tons of traffic and it's actually getting very, very close to the time that I need to leave and I need to charge as well. Oh, yeah, a little bit of a problem, but uh, we, 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 we'll see. Hey, yes. Nice, all right, look at this. This just opened and we've just cut everyone up and we've gone into this one. We made it through. Somehow we were like the first through, which is really, really strange. But the problem is I've only got 100, focus, and 23 kilometers left. And when I get over to the UK, I need like 120 uh, to get to the next supercharge station here in Maidstone. You can see that it's actually grayed out because I won't be able to get there with my current amount of charge. But hopefully when I cross here, I will be able to get there. And I can't charge at this one because I, when you click on it, it says here, France bound only. So I'd be completely screwed. So I've got to save the energy now and then I'm going to really slowly drive up to Maidstone and charge there. Also, I seem to have been put in, I think, the wrong section. This is the smaller car section. Whereas because this car's over two meters, I need to be over there with the vans. I might actually talk to someone and ask them if I can like go over there instead because I'm just a little bit nervous. Like Because if I open up the rear doors, they might not be able to open in the small cabin. So I wanna make sure, I wanna make sure I'm gonna fit and I'm gonna be all right. Going on to the big train. So yeah, I was like all the way over there in the wrong section and I spoke to this lady and they were like, no, no, we're full. And I was like, well, I'm not gonna get in the other one. And um, after chatting to her about the car, she was like, oh, actually we've got a space. So yeah, I'm also piloting, as you can see, down into the train. And I kind of want to see if I can autopilot the whole way in. Uh, I'm going to give it a go. We made it on safe and sound, no problems in the end, so that's good. Uh, yeah, autopilot would not work down here. I was trying everything to try and get it to work, but it just wasn't working. It wasn't picking anything up, which kind of makes sense. We are in a train, so it would have been really cool to see it try and do something. But at the start, I thought it might guide in, but the lines went like straight past the train, so obviously it just uh, just avoided it. So yeah, we're on the we're on the train now. It's going to be another. 45 minutes until we're into the UK. Actually, I'm just gonna jump in the dream case. I'm downloading two episodes of Gavin and Stacy right now because if you haven't watched Gavin and Stacy, just go watch it and then you'll, you'll realize. Then we just need to make sure we get to the next uh, supercharger with enough charge. So yeah, I've got 75 miles and I think it's 70 miles to the charger. So I'm gonna turn off my AC and everything. I'm gonna turn everything off and just let the car have a little bit of a relax. the road from Andover to Marlborough and I, I know this road really well so this is like home for me basically as we get here this starts to feel more like home uh, the drive back in the UK has been really easy there's been loads and loads of police everywhere uh, because obviously Donald Trump's over at the moment so that's pretty cool and he was actually driving right where I was which was really really cool so um, yeah it was good to see the convoy and everything and yeah, it's been good. I met another couple of people at every supercharger station. I chat with everybody at supercharger station. So if you see me, feel free to come talk. Uh, and it's really nice. It's just a really nice uh, community and, and everything. So we've currently got 28 miles to go with 51 miles in the battery. 
we're gonna do this no problem and to be honest the rest of this isn't really interesting for me to film because I kind of do it all the time so I want you guys to uh, let me know what you think about this vlog. This is the second kind of road trip vlog I've done. Yes, this one was maybe a little bit more extreme than the first one being I actually went to Europe, the rest of Europe and stuff. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Thank you guys anyway so much for watching. Thank you all for the continued support. Thank you for watching the channel. It's absolutely amazing. This channel is just going to keep on growing and we're going to have uh, really awesome content actually coming very soon. So make sure you stay tuned and uh, just stick around for a little bit. Anyway, until next time, don't forget everybody, drive safe.